let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody, Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Poetic Gems by Jewel Christie is a book of poems meant to be enjoyed by everyone with a song in their heart. If the song does not yet seem to be there, well, create your own song from your observations, the use of your five senses. Select your words, become a poet, and Jewel says, then just sing. A native Houstonian, Jewel liked words and most times were curious about their origins. She was an English major in college, went on to receive a doctorate in in curriculum and instruction. A distinguished career in education, she taught middle school and college. Dr. Christie was also an assistant principal, active in her church, various civic and philanthropic organizations, also the author of Jewels, a collection of mind-savoring poetry, and Order in the Schoolhouse, Discipline with a New Attitude. Dr. Christie believes in living the golden rule, something she has done all of her life, and doing your best now. And she's with us on the program, Dr. Jewel Christie, author of Poetic Gems. Uh, Dr. Christie, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us on the show today. Thank you so much. I love what you're doing with the with the poetry and touching people in such an inspirational way. Let's talk about Poetic Gems and where that came from. What was the motivation for putting this collection, Poetic Gems, together? Um, as I started out saying, the um, Poetic Gems came to me from need the need for a spiritual uplift at the time when my son and my brother, my brother Richard and my son Stephen were both ill at the same time, different uh, illnesses. And um, I would go and visit Richard and his wife, uh, but I would stay with Stephen every day. Um, uh, and as I sat there with him while he was in the hospital and then later in the nursing home, um, I began to write and I would just write what I felt. This was kind of relieving my grief, I think. Yes. But at the same time, as I began to write, I think I thought about this was also making me uh, remember the memories that I shared with both my brother and my, my son. And so it made me think about this is a time when we need to do as much as we can when we are uh, with each other in this short life that we can um, love on each other and also uh, make sure that um, as we are loving each other that we can be kind to one another too. And so that began, the, the writing of the poetry began to uplift me and to make me feel much better Uh, as I thought about the memories that I shared with both my brother and my son. And by recording my inspiration. Yeah. And recording these, the the poems you have, these memories will live on forever. Won't they? You will go back and uh, and a smile on your face as you're reading many of these poems that bring back the, the fond memories of the loved ones. The book is poetic gems. The, Book is written by Jewel Christie. Book's available at Amazon. It's uh, available at the the usual places. Let's talk about uh, poetry, it, sir. It's also available at um, um, the 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 publisher that uh, who who published the book is Ex Libris. Oh Ex yes, Libris. okay, okay, Ex, Ex Libris, and we'll yeah. mention that as well. We'll have that up on our website. So basically, wherever books are sold, you'll be able to pick up a copy of, of Poetic Gems. Let's talk about poetry. It, it intimidates a lot of people. And I understand what, in an early age, you were actually involved in, in writing poetry. When did you begin to write poetry? Um, I began to write poetry, I think, at a, around, I, I remember writing about uh, nine or ten years old. I would write poetry. And one of my poets, poems that I had written, I, I expressed to you that my mom had saved it for me. And it's in, um, it's, it's in the, the book behind me, uh, Jewels. Uh, she saved that poem for me. And I don't remember how old I was, but I know I, I wasn't a teenager yet. And um, I was about from the time I was from nine to 11 years old is called reality. As I proceeded to carve out my own little world, 
cutting away the umbilical strings and taken to the air with my own little wings, I stumbled into the huge realm of strife, crashing head on into life. And that was one of the poems that I had written and my mother saved it for me and I, I was able to put it into my Jules book. <laughs> you know, that's amazing that your mother would see something there and hang on to that poem all yes. of these years. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Let's say you were 11, the top end of that, uh, that okay. scale that you were at, at 11. That's, that's pretty impressive. You had a talent at, at an early age. Was there a, a particular influence, somebody that you, a poet that you read that you were inspired by? Uh, well, I was inspired by several. Maya Angelou is what I, who had mentioned. Yes. And, uh, also, um, Langston Hughes, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, Shakespeare, and uh, I loved American English poets as well as English, the English poets. So those were all of the poets that I enjoyed reading. But my grandfather used to sit with my brothers. I have three brothers, and we would, I had three brothers, and um, we would sit on the front porch in the evenings uh, after dinner, and he would recite poetry to us. He was not a learned man, but he enjoyed poetry and he enjoyed music. And so he would uh, recite poetry to us. I just remember one of them was the walrus and the carpenter. And he would uh, recite the poems to us, which also increased my enjoyment for poetry and giving me the desire to remember poetry and to write it myself. See, it's one of those moments with a loved one that you shared years ago, but the smile on your face, we're doing a video portion of this as well that's up on YouTube, but the, the smile on your face as you're talking about it, that's something that uh, that, lasts, oh. that lasts for a lifetime. Jewel Christie, our guest, the book is Poetic Gems, available at Ex Libris and uh, the usual places. We'll give you that as, as we go through the program. Is poetry easy to write? I mean, it seems like it is for you, but for so many of us, again, there's some that intimidating factor there. Is it easy to write? And, and did you find at a young age it was easy for you to write? Well, it was because I, I said before, uh, when we would play games and uh, skip rope and do hopscotch, we would always try to rhyme words as we, as we did our games and played. And so... I guess, you know, you have to have a passion for writing, but look at the young people today. They love hip hop. That's nothing but poetry. Exactly. Uh, it's their yes. way of doing it, you know, but uh, and the, uh, all the, 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 the modern genres that they do with their, their, their writings uh, and, and they put it to music. It's just the same as poetry. And so if you have a desire to write it, you can just, just write what you feel. And poetry takes on different forms as you were talking about. That's a fascinating yeah. conversation. And you, you know, involved in education and you see children and you see young adults and what shapes them, the, uh, uh, you know, in English class and writing and writing poetry, yes. that, that type of thing. Let's talk a little bit about advice you might give to people who would like to become a writer, who would like to, to write poetry. Uh, how do they go about getting started? When did you decide, uh, I really enjoy this, I think I'm going to start maybe writing and, and maybe even publishing some poems. How can somebody get started? Well, I just started with the, they always talk, talk to us about our five senses. And uh, you first start off with what you see, what you observe. And so that's one of the senses, what you see, all the that's in the world, all of nature, what you see. What you hear, the sounds that you hear, what you smell, there are different kinds of odors and aromas. You can t write about those things. And also what you taste. And finally, what you feel. Now, what you feel, I said, is, it, it comes in two forms. Uh, one part of feeling is tactical, what you can actually touch and, and, uh, as you see it. But then also what's in your heart things that are in your heart, you can write about those things too. So it can be easy to write about if you just concentrate on the things that you see in your surroundings, in your world, your environment. Yeah, you talk about create your song from your observations. Do you find that maybe we don't observe enough? We go through life so quickly without 
really stopping and look around because as you're talking about the senses, it you know when you slow things down and you look around, there's a lot of neat things going on around us, isn't there? A lot of things we take for granted. Yes. And some things are very simple. They're the simple things in life that we can we can get to um, internalize and think about those things. And they can be real simple things that makes you want to write about them, things that you see in nature, things that you see in life, things that are uh, that occurs between family members, between interactions between people, those kinds of things you can write about. And they're very simple, but it also means that you are using using your senses in order to create your thoughts and then to write about those things that you think about. The book we're talking about with Jewel Christie, our guest on the program, is Poetic Gems, available at Ex Libris, Amazon, the, the usual places, and we'll have those up on our website. How did you grow to enjoy poetry? Again, you, you talk about your father. Was that where this this fascination began when when well, he, my, was, my he was reading to you? Yes. Yeah. It, it started with my grandfather. Um, my grandfather would always read poetry to us, and he would read he would recite, I don't know how he had learned them, but he would re- he would recite what he had learned. And uh, it made an impression, I think, not only on to me, but to my brothers too. But for me, it made me want to go on and, con- and, and not only listen to what he said, but also try to write myself. And so uh, that sometimes the things we need to listen to are the elder people in our families. And sometimes they can give us motivation to do things that, might be of some value later on. <laughs> well, certainly did in a couple of cases with your father and, and your grandfather. I, the passion you have for, for writing, for, for writing poetry in this particular case is something I, I would think will be with you your entire life. Do you plan on keeping, keeping on writing poetry? Are you writing poems now? As long as my arthritic fingers will move and will hold writing utensils, <laughs> and as long as I can get a piece of paper to scribble it on, those times when I can have thoughts that makes me want to write and present it to the world, I think I'll do it as long as I'm able to to live. And for me, like education, writing, and especially writing poetry or writing things from my heart, will last forever. And boy, poetry is a form of education, isn't it? You could write a poem, yes. five people could read the poem, maybe come away with a little bit different interpretation, and it's all sort of in our mind, isn't it? We take those words and we visualize what you're talking about, and it really strikes uh, maybe a different message in, in all of us. We, we may read the same poem and internalize it in a different way, but it doesn't matter. My my point is, sometimes whatever we read may be even different from what the author intended. Yes. However, if you got anything out of it, any good thing out of the reading of the poetry, the poem or whatever that you read, then that's a good thing. So continue to do that and continue to read so that you can also become better informed about what those things mean in, in poetics. You know, there's a lot of poetic license in where, the, where what you read may not be exactly what the poet meant, but because there is the poetic license, you can summarize or you can feel that maybe this is what I can add to it. And so it can be uh, something that can be, you can carry on and be valuable to you. And if it gets us thinking, it serves the purpose. Isn't that the what you... You would, the goal of art is just to get us feeling, uh, get us thinking. So if it's a little different than what you wrote, uh, that's okay because we're in that's our okay. world. Yeah, that you in, inspired us to get into. I, I love the title of the book, Poetic Gems. How did you come up with that? Poetic Gems. Well, of course, it's a book of poems. So poetic, that's the word, poetic. Yes. When I think of gems, I think of precious things. I think of things that are special that are valuable, that are meaningful to me. Gems. There's one little gem in my book, Poetic Gems, only three lines. It's entitled, 
loving. I was loved when I was the baby. I was even loved when I became a lady. But now I love as a woman. Very simple, three lines, but it's meaningful to me. So I call it my keepsake. <laughs> it's a keeper. That it definitely for me, is a keeper. It's valuable. It's, and it, it's meaningful for me. And I hope that when others read it, they can get some meaning from it too. And sometimes we think of poetry has to be this very long, intricate, and all of the rhyming lines and all of this. What What's your def definition of poetry? Because you just took some some carefully crafted sentences and, <laughs> and, and gave us something beautiful that we can, we can grasp a hold of and has motivated you. What's your definition of poetry? Yeah, poetry to me can, like I mentioned, the, the, the young people now who's writing all of their... Uh, their, their music that they have that's so different from the music that we were reared on. Um, but it's meaningful for them. So poetry to me can be words that, 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 that grows with the person. Definition of it means that it's po a poem that are words that have rhythm, don't have to have rhyme, can be prose, or can be just simple sentences, but they have some meaning and they always make music. They have rhythm. That's just so well said. Uh, a minute or so left with us on the program is Jewel Christie, author of the, the new book, Poetic Gems. She's the author of Jewels, a collection of mind-savoring poetry. You'll find all of this at the, the usual places, Ex Libris, the publisher of Poetic Gems, where you'll find that. What do you hope that your poetry will bring to those of us who read it? As you're, as you're writing this, what do you hope the takeaway is from, from those of us who are reading and enjoying your poems? Rick, I hope that my writing is not in vain, that somebody beside me will enjoy it. That's the first thing. I hope that my poetry brings enjoyment. I hope that my poetry will also bring entertainment, that it will bring humor, and that it will bring encouragement. It will be encouraging for others to read what I have written and say, I can do that too. Write it. Think of it. Write it. Become a poet and just sing. I love that. Select your words, become a poet, and sing and enjoy life. And don't forget the uh, the five senses out there. And don't forget to look around and uh, take advantage of, of your observations and, and create your song, uh, Jewel says, with, with those observations. It's been so much fun having you with us on the program. Jewel Christie, author of Poetic Gems, the book is available at Ex Libris, uh, Amazon, the usual places. And uh, are you working on a new collection now that we can have you back and, and do this again? Uh, right now, I'm, I just, I have some things in my mind and I've just, I start off writing sentences. So I haven't compiled it yet, but hopefully, yes, I'll be writing something else soon. I have enjoyed being with you and I thank you for thinking of me uh, to come to uh, just let the world know that Jewel loves to write, and I want to present it to everyone for well, your enjoyment. And everybody will be enjoying it. Jewel's new book is Poetic Gems. Our guest on the program, Jewel Christie, book at Ex Libris, uh, Amazon, the usual places. Jewel, thank you for being with us on the program. Also, hold up there at the, yeah, we've got a copy of the book up there, Poetic uh, Gems, Wherever. books available. Yeah, there we are. Wherever books are sold, there we go. And we will be back on today's program right after these messages. Don't go away. Thank you, Mr. Braddon. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC, for information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.